Without practice, you'll get rusty. But today, we're going to practice getting rusty. Let's make some metal material. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm Derek Elliott from Dirk.com, back today with part three of our metal material tutorial series. That's a tongue twister. And today we're going to be making a rusted material. In the first tutorial, uh, for one, we talked about the lighting and um, interface setup I have here. So if you're interested in that, check out the first tutorial. In the second tutorial, we went over some sort of intermediate procedural textures. And then this one's gonna be just a little bit more advanced. So if you're new to procedural textures, highly recommend you check out the first and second tutorials. But if you think you know what you're doing, or you just wanna follow along, let's go ahead and get started on the rusted material. So what I'm gonna do is select my object here that is selected, and now I need to add a new material. And I wanna use, of course, a principled shader. So I'm gonna press Shift S and switch that to a principled shader. Uh, I harped on the Node Wrangler add-on quite a bit in the last tutorial, so I'll try to avoid it in this one. But yeah, turn on the Node Wrangler add-on. And if you miss a hotkey, it's probably the Node Wrangler add-on. So anyways, the way I want to set this up is basically, I know I want certain areas of my mesh to be uh, regular metal and then other areas to be, you know, super rusted. So what I'm going to do basically is create the rusted material and the regular metal material, and then I'm going to tell Blender later where to put each one. So let's go ahead and make the rusted metal material first. So I'm gonna press Shift A and add a texture, noise texture. And when we Shift Control, left click on that, using the Node Wrangler add-on, we have our noise texture here. And I wanna press Control T using that same shall not be named add-on, and plug that into object. And what that does is just spread this, it maps this noise texture a little bit better around our object. So now what I need to do is add a converter color ramp. And this time we're actually gonna use some color with the color ramp. Usually I just you do black and white to like kind of control things. And we'll do that too, but what we wanna do now is go ahead and set up our rest of material. So I'm gonna go ahead and start changing some of these values to kind of, you know, get some rusted stuff. Maybe if you want to sample an image or something like that and pull your colors from that, that would be one way to go about this. But I'm just gonna kinda eyeball it here. I've done this a couple times, so hopefully we can not spend too long on this part. And I think in this middle area, I want this to be kind of like a like an orangey color. So I'm gonna bring the saturation up, value down a little bit, value up maybe and just kind of pull these flags around. By the way, if you missed it, it was kind of quick. You press this little plus sign right here and that'll create a new flag. And if you click the minus, it'll get rid of it. So the more you add here, um, you know, technically the more detail you'll have, but I think it really doesn't take too much to get this looking pretty good. So I'm just gonna maybe bring this value up a little bit. I don't wanna play with this for too long, but you guys should take all the time you need to get it looking nice and rusty. Let's maybe bring this value up a little bit, something like that. And then of course, I'm gonna to wanna to scale this up quite a bit because I think that that'll look a little bit better. And uh, when I've got that scaled up, I'm getting a little bit more of this beige color than I want. Let's, uh, let's actually bring the value up on that a little bit. And then maybe just kind of drag this in over. Yeah, get it to where you want. I think that's gonna work pretty good for me. And now maybe I'll actually also add some distortion to this. But yeah, play with these values as much as you want. You don't have to copy what I'm doing. I encourage you not to because there's just really no reason to. There's there's plenty of, plenty of things you can do here. So we have our rust color set up here. So let's go ahead and plug that into the color input, see what we're looking like. Um, it's shiny, we don't want it shiny. So let's go ahead and turn the, we're gonna influence the roughness later with a map, but just while we're doing this, I'm gonna turn it up to one. So that's looking pretty good. Now I want to go ahead and set up some bumpiness for this rust material. So I'm gonna press Shift A, add a vector bump. And you probably could use the same uh, inputs here to control that rust, but I want it to be like a really fine bump. So I'm gonna use a separate noise texture. So I'm gonna press Shift D to duplicate that and then drag that same vector input there. And then I'm gonna pull this into the bump height. And so now when we take a look at this, that's looking pretty cool. 
Um, but like I mentioned, I want this to be much smaller, so I'm going to increase that scale quite a bit. Something like that's probably going to look pretty good. And, uh, oops, or zero there to get back in my camera view where I've got it nicely aligned. And, uh, yeah, let's, let's see what that looks like. I think that's going to be pretty good. So, yeah, we've got quite a bit of bump going on there. Maybe we want to pull down the strength just a little bit so it's not so wild and crazy. Yeah, maybe we're wild and crazy today. I'll turn it back up a little bit. So yeah, I think that's looking pretty decent. So now if you do recall from the last tutorial, the second one, we used the pointiness input to make these cracks and crevices a little bit darker. And we're going to do that again here today. So I need to pull some, I need to input data from the geometry of this mesh. So I'm going to go up to input geometry. See, it makes sense. Those Blender developers are smart. And I want to use this pointiness input to kind of help define where these cracks and crevices are and make those areas a little bit darker. So I need to use another color ramp, just like we did in the last tutorial. Converter, color ramp, drag this in here. Shift control, left click to preview it. Oops. And uh, what we're gonna do now is just basically make like kind of a black and white map that we're gonna to use to tell Blender which areas should be a little bit darker because they've got some dirt in them and then areas that don't need that effect. So let's just get those together. I think that looks pretty good like that. And now the same way we did it last time. So this is the rusty color I want when it's um, just like kind of on the surface, like on the knee and stuff. But then in these crevices is where I want a darker color. So what I need to do now is set up that darker color. So I'm going to add a hue saturation node right after here. And let's just bring that value way down. Uh, it doesn't need to be quite zero. We want to still have some color there. Maybe we can actually turn the saturation up so it doesn't lose so much. Mm, I'm not sure what that'll do, but again, these values aren't like incredibly crucial. So sure, we'll leave it at that. So this will be our darker color. They'll go in the cracks and crevices. And then this will be our lighter color that goes on the surface. So now I basically need to use this pointiness map that I've created to um, kind of mix between these two. So I'm going to press Shift A, add a color, and that's going to be a mix RGB. So let's plug the darker color into the top input, and the normal color will bypass this hue saturation and will go straight into the color 2 input. So now if we look at this mix, this factor of 0.5 means it's mixing them evenly together. But if it's all the way to 0, it's the darker version. If it's all the way at one, it's the lighter version. And that lines up perfectly with the way this map is set up. So black, remember, corresponds to a value of zero, white to a value of one. So when we plug this in here, the black areas should be getting this second one, and the whiter areas should be getting this first input, or sorry, this color two input that bypasses the, the value going down. So let's put that all together, and we can see that it is working correctly. So now when we plug this into the base color and we put it all together we now have our nice darker cracks and crevices here and so now whenever we are you know wherever this rust material appears if it happens to be on a crack or something then we know it's going to get this nice effect so now the next thing i want to do is go ahead and set up the normal metal material so that's going to be pretty simple um, we'll use this pointiness input again so i'm just going to press shift d on this color ramp drag this into the value and then let's um let's go ahead and kind of preview this so i'm going to basically what i want to do is i guess let's let's move this in here just so we can see what we're doing and then so that's going to be metallic and then it's not going to have this bump so let's just unplug that for now okay so let's take a look at what that would look like so let's bring the value down here and decide whatever you want for this, but I think I want this to be kind of like a darker color. So the reason I'm using the pointiness again is just so that it gets that same effect where it's kind of darker in the crevices. So for this, uh, I don't want it to be totally black in the crevices. So let's, uh, let's bring that value up just a little bit. And then I don't want it to be this kind of bright, shiny metal. So I'm going to bring this other value down a little bit. And we're going to pretty much leave it at that. If you guys want to actually input an entire 
separate material for this, like, you know, maybe the one we did in the first or second tutorial, then you can do that. But I think for me, this is going to be fine. So now is where this is going to really start to come together. I'm going to give myself just a little bit more space here. Okay, so now we have our rusted material that we had set up just a minute ago, and we have our normal metal material. So we need to mix between those two now. You can see we we mixed we did some mixing here, just the darker and the lighter of the rust color. But now I want to actually mix together um, kind of all of it. And that's where we're going to kind of create our master rust controller texture. So I'm going to add another texture, make that a noise texture again, drop that right there in the middle, and then drag this into the same vector. And now let's just go ahead and briefly set up and we'll go ahead and add our other color ramp. We're going to use that, of course, to control it. Let's go ahead and put that in there. And now let's go ahead and get sort of set up with where we want the rust to be and where we want the um, the normal metal to be. So I'm going to just bring these together. I want this to be pretty tight so that those transitions are pretty sharp. So I'm bringing this in, something like that. And that's going to be enough at least just to get us started. She looks like a cow character now, which, like I mentioned, these tutorials contain many hidden textures, and cow texture is one of them. So anyways, now we have our new map that's going to be used to mix between the two um, materials, basically, that we've got set up here. So now, let's get a little bit confusing here, but hold on, Derek. You can do this. Okay, so we have our metal material set up, and we have our other one set up. So let's add another mix node. And so this is the metal material. Okay, so remember, black zero, white one. So I want the black spots to be the rusty spots. So that's gonna be zero. So I actually want that to be in the first input. So let's move that down there. And then this is our, you know, if you remember, kind of all our rust stuff is feeding into this one. So this is our kind of output of the rust material. So we're gonna put that in the first here. And then we wanna use this noise texture that we just set up to control the mixing between these two. So now if we plug that in there, shift control left click, okay, it's working great. So now we have our rust material appearing in the black areas and our metal material appearing in the white areas on this color ramp that we just set up. So let's pull those all back together and now what we also need to do, you, you remember when I was previewing the materials, I was kind of manually adjusting this metallic, but we want that to happen automatically. So what I'm going to use is this same texture here to influence where it's metallic and where it's not metallic. So I want a metal value of zero where the rust is, and I want a metal value of one where the rust is not. So I think that'll work with our map. So yeah, we've got the rust is in the black areas, so that should work fine. So I think we should be able to plug this right into the metallic input here. Now let's take a look at that. Okay, yes, it's working. So we've got we've got metal on the outside here, and then this is a non-metal. It's a little bit hard to see, but that's because of our, um, our roughness has not been set yet. So let's go ahead and set that roughness value now. So what I'm gonna do is again using this same texture Except now we've got a little bit of a problem. We want the rusted material to be a very matte finish, like not not very shiny, and we want the outside to be a little bit more shiny. So if I were to plug this into the roughness now, let's go ahead and actually kind of, let's look at this all together, and then, okay, so yeah, yeah, you can see that it's like super shiny where the rust is. So the first thing I'm going to do is just go ahead and invert it. So I'm going to press shift A and add a color invert and then drop that right there. Okay, so that is so now the now the colors are at least going the right direction. So it's shiny where the metal is and it's rough where the uh, non-metal is, where the rust is. And just while I'm looking at this, I think I want to bring my scale up a little bit on my rust texture. Okay, that's looking pretty good. So now that we've got that set up, I don't want this to be totally shiny, so just like we did in the last tutorial, I'm gonna do a vector, or sorry, converter, math, and I wanna basically bring this black value up. I'm like pointing at my screen, that's not gonna work, you guys can't see me unless you're watching this tutorial from outside my window. 
while I'm recording it. Um, hopefully not. <laughs> so I've got my add input there. And what that does is allow me to bring up this black value. So it was zero because it's black. Remember zero equals black equals, yeah, zero black. You, you get the point. And I want to bring that up so it's not so shiny. So I'm going to just use this add basically to basically influence how shiny that outside is. And since this is already one where the metal is not, or sorry, where the metal Wait, where the rust is, is black. Okay, yeah, we inverted it. So this is the one we're actually looking at. So I'm fine with this uh, rusted area being one. So when I add to it, it's it's just going to stay at one, basically, because roughness only reads from zero to one. So when this is all in there, now we have it working correctly, where this is basically controlling the roughness of our outer area. And uh, let's maybe even move these apart a little bit, see what this looks like. Maybe you want those rusted areas. Maybe I want them a little bit bigger. But you can see how versatile these you know, color ramps and stuff are. You can really use them to have quite a bit of control over what the uh, what the material is looking like. So when we zoom out, we can see we're looking pretty good. And now we can go ahead and also plug this bump mac back in. But that is going to create a problem. We have the bump now being applied everywhere, and we've kind of lost the look of the the metal on the outside there. So what I want to do, of course, is use this same color ramp again. This is, again, kind of our master controller to influence the bump height, basically. So, or sorry, the bump strength. So right now, it's a strength of 0.9. And when we plug this in here, this map is basically going to tell it to be either 0 or 1. So I guess what we were doing earlier with the strength didn't really matter. We'll just leave it at 1. And we could affect it with the distance if we needed to. But I think it looks okay. So... I'm going to plug this in here. And then now what that's going to do, okay, it's doing the opposite of what we want. So since we already have an invert, we could actually just pull it from here and put that into the strength. Okay, and now it's working really good. Okay, so we have our bumpy, rusty material all in the right places, and we have our metal material in the rest of the object. And that pretty much does it for this material, guys. So let me just zoom out a little bit here so you can kind of take a look at the setup. I'll uh, ignore the mapping nodes over there just so you can see the, the juicy stuff. And uh, yeah, that's basically it. I'm going to go and save my file before it crashes. And uh, we can now use this color ramp, this kind of master controller, since everything's all hooked up procedurally, to control how rusted this object is. So now you could kind of add this to, you know, if you had some game assets or something, you could kind of add this texture and then bake it with different values or something like that. You could have, you know, maybe one level is like when the game starts, everything's pristine. And then maybe like by the end, it's all super rusted everywhere. So anyways, that's about it for this tutorial. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Please enjoy the full screen preview of the material. And uh, yeah, make it your own. Play around with these values, do something cool, make this outside metal a little more advanced. But um, yeah, thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the first two parts as well. If you didn't, go check them out. And uh, yeah, subscribe to the channel, like the video. I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.